All right, so the straw poll test came back positive. You do have invention fever. Hey guys, and welcome to my efficient and realistic 1 to 120 invention guide for RuneScape 3 in the year 2016. This guide is a little different than the last one. Firstly, invention is an elite skill which requires level 80 in divination, smithing, and crafting. Secondly, invention is a skill that, in the real world, is not easily taught. It is rather a process of elimination of ideas until you find the one that works. The skill is coded into the game and therefore is not technically a complete invention skill but it's still very variable on how you would go about training it. Since invention is such a variable skill, I have to approach the guide at a weird angle. Let's cover some of the important items that aid in higher experience rates. Familiars such as the Nihil may aid in increase of experience. Nihils give an accuracy boost of 5%, but for all intents and purposes, I have neglected that in the guide. Let's move into the mechanics. To understand this guide a little bit better, try to wrap your head around the idea of an assembly line. One person will grab the unfinished product, let's say a toy car, they will put this unfinished car on a conveyor belt, then the next person will add something to it, let's say a car door. Once the product goes to the end of the assembly line, you have a toy car that every child wants. But that's just the finished product. How do we get to that finished product in this particular skill? Well, much like the forgeries around the world that melt down metals and plastics, we have the ability to break down items into their raw components. These raw components are similar to what plastic is in the real world for a manufacturer. From there, the manufacturer will use the plastic to form the different components of the toy car, such as the toy engine, the toy car door, etc. We too can take the components that we have gotten from breaking items down and form them into something called a gizmo. A gizmo is much like a toy car during its mid stage in the assembly line. It is not quite finished, but it is a nice step in the right direction. The last step for a toy car are the decals. You know, the ones that tell the kid that he's got the best toy car? Yeah, those decals. The decals of invention are called perks. Perks are the cherry on top of the ice cream. Although you don't really need them, they add just the right touch. There are other items involved with invention, and I will explain them in a bit more detail in just a second. We've talked about components, gizmos, perks, but what does this mean for my training? Basically nothing. Well, without augmenters, that is. Augmenters are the backbone of solid, realistic, and efficient invention training. Think of it like the keel of a boat. Without it, the boat would not function correctly. So too is the augmenter with the invention skill. Although you technically can train the invention skill by making perks only, it is not realistic due to the mass amounts of GP it would cost. Augmenters are non-tradable items that require certain components to create. Once you have an augmenter and level 2 invention, you can attach it to a weapon. It is not advised to train with it until you finish the tutorial in the invention guild though. Once you have the augmented weapon, you can kill monsters in order to gain weapon experience. Weapon experience will level up your item. Each weapon level will give a different additive bonus up to level 10. When you disassemble a weapon that has a level of more than 1, you will gain invention experience and additive bonus depending on the level of the weapon. That is the essence of invention training. Now that we sort of understand what the invention skill is about, we can move forward with the guide. This guide is for the invention skill and will portray theoretical maximums. A theoretical maximum is the highest possible amount that can be achieved during any circumstance. It is the maximum that has been calculated by its core mechanics rather than actually throwing myself out there for multiple hours to get a more realistic experience rate. Before you go criticizing me for giving wrong information, think of it like this. It's more of a goal to strive to get to as close to as possible so that you can get the maximum efficiency. Although this theoretical maximum is actually achievable, only the very focused players will end up achieving it. This guide is not to bring anybody down. It's to build you up to be the best that you can be even if it is just a game. A good work ethic can do wonders for your life in the real world too. The calculations in this video may cause headaches, so I apologize in advance if what I talk about is not explained in the best way possible. I try my best to explain things in a manner that grabs everyone's attention and also leaves them with a sense of motivation and more knowledge than before listening. With all that being said, whew, let's get into the guide. Levels 1 through 4. For levels 1 through 4, you want to complete the invention tutorial. The tutorial does not take very long and it is definitely worth the time invested as you go straight from level 1 to 4 invention. If the tutorial does not discuss the research for augmented item maximum level 5, check out the invention workshop on the left side of the bench to get it. It will be important for the next part of the guide. Levels 4 through 27. For this level segment, you should disassemble some items to make your first two augmenters. To disassemble an item, Drag an item to the bottom left of your inventory, where the light bulb is. You see it? Okay. Or, you can look in your magic book for the light bulb action and drag it onto your ability bar for ease of access. Just press your hotkey for the invention action and click on the item you want to disassemble. For one augmenter, you will need 225 incandescent energy, 
45 base parts, 45 flexible parts, 45 tensile parts, 8 enhancing components, and 7 powerful components. This may seem daunting, but don't worry. I've got you covered. For the two augmenters that you want to make, you just need to disassemble 140 magic shield boats, 180 amulet of defenses, 100 Zamorakian brew four dose, and 80 adamant daggers. Based on the probability of acquiring each component from the above listed items, this should get you to the two augmenters that you need. Augmenters give a base experience of 495. It yields 30,000 experience an hour, including the disassembly experience and time, and costs around 275 GP per experience. And you will be spending approximately 10 minutes making these augmenters. This will cost you just over 1.3 million GP. Once you have your first two augmenters, you want to augment two black salamanders, charge them with some Herolander tar, and kill water fiends until your salamanders salamanders reach level 5. From there, you want to take your salamanders and disassemble them. You will get 216,000 experience in invention for disassembling both salamanders. This will get you to level 28. Leveling both salamanders to level 5 at Water Fiends is around 424,000 experience per hour and will take just over 30 minutes. This will cost you just over 1.2 million GP. Levels 27 through 45. For this level segment, you should have some research available to you. The tutorial should have discussed the basics, but I will show you a method of getting a perfect discovery very fast. First, you find the components that will be on your prototype. Then, you swap your first and second components. Check the amount of inspiration required and make a mental note. If you have trouble remembering like I do, you may look for the specific color code of inspiration. Red is bad, yellow is decent, white is excellent, and green is perfect. Once you swap the first and second components, swap them back. Now swap the first and third components. Is this combination any better? Either way, make a mental note and swap them back. Do this for the first and fourth, and finally for the first and fifth component slots, as shown in the video. Choose the best swap out of the five combinations. Once you have determined the best combination for the first slot, do this method for slot two and three, two and four, and lastly two and five. Note which was the best combination for slot number two. Do this method for slot three and four, then three and five. Finally, swap slot 4 and 5 if needed. If you still have not found the combination, don't fear, you are very close. Usually you are only one swap away from the perfect, so you just need to try the last 5 combinations. This may seem confusing, but I assure you that statistically, this is the fastest way to ensure a perfect score every time without guesswork. Go ahead and use this method for researching the gizmo dissolver, equipment dissolver, augmentation dissolver, augmented armor, maximum charge improvement 1, and the augmented item maximum level 10. Once you've done this, disassemble some more items to make your next four augmenters. Disassemble 280 magic shield bows, 360 amulet of defenses, 200 Zamorakian brew four dose, and 160 adamant daggers. Based on the probability of acquiring each component from the above listed items, this should get you the four augmenters that you need. You want to augment two hand cannons, as well as an armadil chest plate and a carol's top, and head back to water fiends. Make sure you bring both range tops to water fiends, and don't forget any other gear or supplies you would take to kill the monsters. Two-handed weapons gain experience 1.5 times as fast as armor experience, so once your first hand cannon is at level 10, disassemble it. Wield your second hand cannon and keep training. Once your augmented armadil chest plate is level 10, disassemble it. Put on your augmented Carl's top and continue training. Once your second hand cannon is level 10, disassemble it. You will get 1.377 mil experience in invention for disassembling two hand cannons and one armadil chest plate. This will get you to level 45. Leveling all this equipment at Water Fiends is around 730,000 experience per hour and will take just over an hour and a half. This will cost roughly 4.1 million GP. Levels 45 through 60. Congratulations on level 45. You can now augment both of the armor slots and a two-handed weapon. For this level segment, you should have some research available to you. Go ahead and use the method of swapping components discussed earlier in the video for researching the Junk Chance Reduction 1, Charge Drain Reduction 1, Maximum Charge Improvement 2, and the Augmented Leg Armor Blueprints. Once you've done this, disassemble some more items to make your next six augmenters. Disassemble 420 Magic Shield Bows, 540 Amulet of Defenses, 300 Zamorakian Brew Dose 4, and 240 Adamant Daggers. Based on the probability of acquiring each component from the above listed items, this should get you the six augmenters that you need. You want to augment three Carl's Bows, a second Carl's Top, a Carl's Skirt, and an Armadil Plate Skirt. Bring your first Carl's Top, Armadil Plate Legs, and one of your Carl's Crossbows and head back to Water Fiends. Don't forget any other gear or supplies you would bring to take down the monsters. Once your first Carl's Crossbow has reached level 10, 
disassemble it. You should be level 49 now. You can research explosive components from the invention workbench, and I suggest you do that before moving further. You will have components to make at least one armor a gizmo with the ability to add a crackling 2 perk by now if you disassembled the items I spoke of for the augmenters and the hand cannons during levels 27 through 45. You will still need to get the precious components for the scavenging 2 perk, so disassemble 500 ruby rings or 215 rings of slaying. Make 10 armor gizmos. To make an armor gizmo, just go to an invention workbench, I use Sears Village since it's the closest to a lodestone, and click on the right side of the bench. Go through the invention interface and click on the armor gizmo. Once you have the gizmo in your inventory, left click and scroll down on the interface to find your explosive components, which should be unlocked by now. Add the components so they look like what is shown in the video. Make sure it's an armor gizmo. You should be able to get the scavenging 2, crackling 2 perk on an armor gizmo within 10 tries. This is not a guarantee, so keep trying until you get the perk. Once you have the new perk, install it on your Carl's top. Go back to Water Fiends with your second Carl's bow, Carl's top, and Armadale plate legs. Wield your second Carl's bow and keep training. Your Carl's top and Armadale plate legs will reach level 10 first, so disassemble them. Put on your augmented Carl's skirt and second Carl's top, then finish leveling your second bow to level 10. Go to your bank and disassemble all three of your augmented pieces. You will get 3.213 million experience in invention for disassembling three Carl's bows, two Carl's tops, one Carl's skirt, and one armadillo plate skirt. You will also get the components that you need for later on. This will get you past level 60. Augmenting and leveling all of this equipment at Water Fiends is around 1.2 million XP per hour and will take just under two and a half hours. This will cost just over 11 million GP. Level 60 through 74. Congratulations on level 60. You can now siphon your armor and weapon equipment efficiently at level 12 instead of disassembling at level 10. For this segment, you should have some research available to you. Go ahead and use the method of swapping components discussed earlier in this video for researching the Junk Chance Reduction 2, the Charge Drain Reduction 2, and the Augmented Item Maximum Level 15 blueprints. Once you've done this, disassemble some more items to make your next three augmenters. Disassemble 210 Magic Shield Bows, 270 Amulet of Defenses, 150 Zamorakian Brew Vordos, and 100 and 20 adamant daggers. Based on the probability of acquiring each component from the above listed items, this should get you the three augmenters that you need. You don't need to make any more augmenters all the way to level 120, but just to be on the safe side, we will make some more later. You want to augment one noxious scythe, one malevolent top, and one malevolent plate leg. Remember that two-handed weapons level up 1.5 times faster than any armor does, so make sure you have equipment ciphers with you in your inventory at all times. For every two times that you siphon an armor piece, you will siphon three weapons. I call this one invention cycle. You will get 4.347 million experience in invention for each invention cycle using tier 90 gear and weapons. Two full invention cycles will get you to level 74. Augmenting and leveling all of this equipment through Slayer is around 850k XP an hour and will take approximately 10 hours. This will cost just under 14 million GP. Level 74 through 99. Congratulations on level 74. You can now create the precise 5 perk for your weapon gizmo. For this level segment, you should have some research available to you. Go ahead and use the method of swapping components discussed earlier in this video for researching the Maximum Charge Improvement 3, the Junk Chance Reduction 3 and 4, the Charge Drain Reduction 3 and 4, and the Armadillo Component Blueprints. You are more than welcome to research other blueprints for experience as they are phenomenal, I just haven't included them in my calculations for the leveling sequence. To make the precise 5 perk, make a weapon gizmo the same way you made an armor gizmo, but this time choose the weapon gizmo in the interface. Once the weapon gizmo is in your inventory, left click it and scroll down the interface to where your armadillo components are. Put them into the shell as I have shown in the picture and create the perk. 5 armadillo components have a 100% chance to yield a precise 5 perk. If you would like to gain some extra experience from the enlightened perk, you may want to level some crystal halberds to level 9 and disassemble them before level 83. This will require somewhere between 25 and 57 components. Remember that each augmenter requires you to disassemble 70 magic shield bows, 90 amulet of defenses, 50 Zimmerakian brew dose 4, and 40 adamant daggers. You don't need to make any more augmenters though. In my opinion, these perks are definitely worth getting. Here are the combinations of the Enlightened 3 perk, Enlightened 2 genocidal perk, and the Enlightened 2 demon slayer perk. They are all very helpful and are worth your time going to the crystal halberds as the experience rate is actually more than siphoning. The only downside is it is a little more expensive, which I will talk about in a couple of seconds. Once you have the perks, make sure you set them up correctly in your augmented gear. Precise 5 and the Enlightened 2 Genocidal perk should both be in weapon gizmos, so attach them to your crystal halberd. The Enlightened 3 can be coupled with your Scavenging 2 Crackling 2 perk in the Malevolent top, and the Enlightened 2 Demon Slayer perk can be 
by itself for now until level 99 when you install a Biting 3 perk with it. If you do want to ignore the Enlightened perks, you will want to keep using your Augmented Noxious Scythe and Malevolent Armor. Train through Slayer as you normally would, but with this set of Augmented Armor, whichever you choose. Using the Noxious Scythe and Siphoning will yield around 850k experience per hour, and you will go through 6 invention cycles before you are level 99, totaling the last 25 million experience, and will approximately take 30 hours and cost 41 million GP. Augmenting and leveling the Crystal Hell with the malevolent armor through Slayer is around 915k XP per hour and will take you approximately 28 hours and cost just under 61 million GP. Levels 99 through 120. Congratulations on level 99! You can now create the Biting 3 perk for your armor gizmo efficiently. Oh yeah, and you can also buy a skill cape. <laughs> for this level segment, you should have a lot of research available to you. Go ahead and use the method of swapping components discussed earlier in the video for researching the maximum charge improvements 4 and 5, the junk chance reductions 5, 6, 7, and 8, the charge drain reductions 5, 6, 7, and 8, and the biting components blueprints. If you haven't gotten the enlightened perks, you will want to keep using your augmented noxious scythe and malevolent armor. If you have gotten the enlightened perks, you will want to switch over the crystal halberds to your noxious scythe and install the perks. You will want to install the biting 3 perk that is on your last armor gizmo in the last armor gizmo slot of the malevolent legs. Train through slayer as you normally would, but with this set of augmented armor. You will go through just over 10 invention cycles before you are level 120, totaling the last 45 million experience and will take approximately 30 hours and cost 41 million GP. In total, you will spend 186 million GP on 1 to 120 invention and will take approximately 70 hours. Couple this with Slayer, as I've shown in the video, and your total GP loss will be a profit not a loss, it will be a profit of 149 million GP. So from level 1 to 120 invention, you will actually profit 149 million GP. If you would like to see how I came up with these numbers, I will be explaining it with a spreadsheet within the next couple of minutes. If you are satisfied with the rates I have shown you here, you may click out of the video. I do urge you to continue watching as it is fascinating and knowledge can help you understand some deeper things than how much will this cost me. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you have a great day. Follow me on social media and subscribe for more. Peace.